Hi, my name is Jeff. In this video, we're going to cover programming a mini to accept a new key fob, about 25 bucks from eBay. We're going to use an Xtool D8 scanner and the Xtool KC100 uh, key fob reader. This reads the ID number off of a key fob. That's what it's for. It connects to the D8 with the USB cable. I have no connection with Xtool other than as a customer. And then as a bonus, I will throw in some footage toward the end where we cover actually cutting the key blade. And then finally at the end, we'll compare the cost of getting a fob from the dealer to all the stuff required to do it yourself. Let's get started. Okay, I've got a couple new fobs for this 2011 Mini Countryman. And we're going to try to use the Xtool D8 to program the car to accept them. And I've got uh, the only existing fob in the ignition on, which means you put the fob in, click it in. You do not put your foot on the brake and you press start. That turns the ignition on, but does not start it. And if we press special function, keep programming, agree, There we go. And I need to find BMW. This is a mini, but it's made by BMW. And we want to do immobilizer, auto select. Need to turn on the hazard lights. Why? I don't know. Okay. Seems the automotive engineers have come up with all sorts of crazy interlocks. Things that you have to do a certain way. This seems to be a rather generic message that's the result of doing the auto detect. If you go in and manually select your uh, immobilizer system, you may not get this. And this also seems to set a bunch of codes which we'll need to reset later. But for now, we can just click OK and ignore this. This is where I originally got stuck because the CAS version on my car did not allow for updates via OBD2. So we're going to have to use the CAS update feature here. That is because we need to do a CAS update and yes, remove original key if smart key, please take it out of the car. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm more than halfway through this process and just realized that I didn't press the record button and it's been working at least five minutes now. So I was originally a little concerned about this whole update procedure and that original message I got and I emailed X tools and they replied back very quickly and said, give us the serial number of your unit and they connected to it remotely downloaded the logs of what I'd been doing and said, oh, okay, you know, you just need to update the calves. One tip here when you're doing this type of stuff on your mini, make sure that you set your lights to the off mode, not the automatic mode, or on, or you'll run your battery down. Not that I've done that. Finished. All right. Okay, well, hopefully that did it. Let's go get the fobs.
I retrieved all three fobs. There's the two new ones, the existing one in the car with the ignition on. Now let's see what happens if we go read keys info. Okay, just telling us, well, it still says we have CAS3++ IS tap instead of OBD2. Okay, I plugged in the KC100 key reader. Okay, looking at help again here, it says number two keys matching generate the key program directly via OBD to OBD, generate spare key. So I think we need to go key matching. Okay. So we have key one and two. That's probably the original two keys. One of them, which I still have, but I don't remember which key number that is. Imagine that might be saved in that file. So if I go key three here and press, how about OBD generate key? got that fob in the KC100. Yes. Okay. Pre-processed key into the slot. I guess that means in the dash. I think the smart key has something to do with it remembers seat positions or stuff like that. Put a key that able to start car to coil. I reckon that means into the KC100. Remove the key from the slot and insert again. Press start button. Okay. Okay. Success. In key position three, we actually have a key, and that's that guy, and nothing blew up. So let's try the next key. So if I pull that one out, and I do key position four, OBD generate key. Yes, in key position four, that's fine. Ah, okay, I bet this is that it's got to check with something over the, the Wi-Fi to do it. And this is if you have an original key. And out where I'm at right now, I'm pretty far away from my wireless router. Okay, so we'll do that. We're going to do a remote key, not this smart key. This car's got manual seats and everything anyhow. Okay, pop that in the KC100, right there. Uh, yes. Pre-process finished, okay. Put this in the slot. Okay. Put a key that's able to start the car in XC100. Okay, 
I'm going to screenshot that. Okay. Insert again. Press start. Success. Okay, and we have four keys programmed in now. Okay, what I'll do now is put one of the newly programmed keys in. Turn the ignition on. Do an auto scan and we'll see what happens, okay? Yeah, all these failures are because we were futzing around with things. So we're going to clear all. This one from the driver's footwell module, that is the right rear side marker light. It's got a 4 watt instead of a 5 watt bulb in it, and it's whining about it. I've got new bulbs, but have not put it in yet. Other than that, it looks fine. So, if I press on the brake and press the go button. Woohoo! Kind of stuck it to the key mafia there. We've got... Two $30 keys from eBay programmed into the vehicle. Now, the next thing is, does the remote part work? That I have not tried yet. Let's see. Uh, lock. Yes. Unlock. Sweet. All right. I'm going to go drive around a little bit. Now that we have the mini program to accept the fobs, we're going to go ahead and cut the blades, which is the physical key part that slips into the fob. I've got a fixture here. And this is my drawing of the fixture. I always like to mark the zero zero for machining the fixture and the zero zero for machining the part that goes in the fixture. So I've got my zero zero here for my G code. I was able to come up with this G-code after I found this PDF, which I will link to below. It explains all the different height and horizontal positions of these things. So I was able to make a parametric model and generate based on my key. I think this could be done in G-code as well, but I'll put the link to this stuff down below. Before actually machining the fixture, I 3D printed a sample and made sure, you know, everything was about right. I machined a sample key out of brass and made sure it unlocked the door, and it did. So I feel comfortable not committing to trying to machine this blank here. The bit is a 3 millimeter stub end mill. I think these keys are just brass or some brass alloy. It's non-ferrous. This white stuff is not milk. It's a machine fluid. It's vegetable oil based. So we'll go ahead and give this a whirl and see what happens. Hopefully everything works out fine. Yeah, that's got a nice, easy cut. I'm doing two passes here. One goes almost all the way down, say for, say, you know, a quarter of a millimeter, ten thousandths of an inch. And we'll do the finish pass.
That way we just get a nice finish to the pocket it's making. Well, this one will be the finish pass. Oh, no, excuse me, that was the mouth. It's got the V-shaped mouth there. It's doing two passes of that. I'm going to vacuum up these chips. The vacuum it's being vacuumed into, as you can see, see the hose there is actually dead. It's just acting as a container and I've got another vacuum under the table. That way it keeps all the nasty crap out of the good vacuum. Now if I had taken the time to uh, made a better clamp here rather than just using washers I could have used a single screw. But... And that looks just like the sample, which looked just like the original key that I had. Now we'll do the second side of this guy. I kind of suspect that on the actual car, only one side of this key is moving tumblers around. Which is what most two-sided keys do. They're just made so you can put them in either direction which means if you have two vehicles that take the same key blank you could cut one side of the key with one vehicle and the other side of the key with the other vehicle and since we can program fobs in to the mini as well you could program the same fob to start more than one mini if you have more than one mini that takes the same type of fob and then you can program cut the blade to fit both cars as well. Okay, handheld shaky cam here, moment of truth. Our freshly cut key into the door. Turns, unlocks. That's lock. Yes. Awesome. So We'll go over the pricing of what the dealer wanted to cut this in just a few minutes. So how does the cost of getting a fob from the dealer compare to the hardware to do it yourself? The closest dealer to me in St. Louis wanted $181 for the fob, ready to start your car, plus another $44 for the blade cut to unlock your door. So. 225 ish dollars total plus i'm sure there's tax on that um x tool d8 was about 650 dollars the kc100 was another 300 so about 950 dollars to the hardware do it yourself which is not cheap um, i did two fobs so you know it kind of helps offset at least in my mind um, going through the expense of needing a scanner but i needed a good scanner anyhow in order to work on the car and uh, what sold me on the X tool was I emailed them and said, hey, I need to be able to do these things on my mini. Can it do that? And one was program a fob, uh, program the car to accept the fob. And the other was to be able to reset the adaptations for the Vanos and, you know, tell that to relearn and stuff. And they asked for the uh, VIN number and, and checked and said, yeah, it'll do all that stuff. And they're right. It has, and when I've had you know a few questions along the way, I emailed them and I got a good answer back. So I'm very happy with that. So um, if you just need a fob, one fob, it's not worth buying this yourself unless you just want to do it. Uh, if you need a scanner anyhow, and you like the ability to do stuff yourself, then yeah, this seems like a good way to go. And I've also used this D8 to program in a couple uh, keys to work with my Ford Ranger. So works great for that too. So I hope this is helpful and I hope you know, knowing how you do this and how you can cut the key yourself and all that's helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in that comment section down below, you know, click like and subscribe. That's always nice. And I'll have some more videos in the future. Thanks.